Yako for introduction. Uh, today I will present Eradicating Mosquitoes, the Promise and Perils of Gene Drive Technology. I'm Hang Chan from Gangneung Wonju National University. Next slide. Yeah, you can see a mosquito uh, bite. When we slap a mosquito, we can kill a mosquito. When we use pesticide, we can uh, destroy a swamp of mosquitoes. But when we use gene drive, we can eradicate the whole species of mosquitoes. So that will be problematic. So I would like to show how the eradicating mosquito can be uh, problematic and uh, as well as promise. Next slide. <coughs> yeah, mosquitoes are high impact disease vectors transmitting uh, pathogen agents that cause disease such as malaria, yellow fever, chikunga, dengue, and most recently, Zika. I got a travel warning on the Zika when I arrived here, so it will be problematic in Indonesia also. Uh, mosquito kill on average of uh, 70 to 5,000 people every year. Since the science first made the connection between malaria and mosquito bite, the mosquito has been a subject of important research and the vector of at least a dozen fatal diseases. There are many as a, uh, 35 uh, hundred different mosquito species. Sorry, species spread malaria, which kill more than 400,000 people, mostly children, every year. Next slide, please. You can see the malaria prevailing in the uh, uh, sub Saharan Africa and the southern. Asia. Next slide. Uh, from the southern part of the American continent, the Zika is spreading to sub-Saharan Africa and the uh, southern part of the Asia. So. Uh, it will be problematic uh, for the current uh, health. Next slide. And uh, you can see uh, two uh, important mosquito species, Ides aegypti and uh, Anopheles gambiae. Ides aegypti is a major malaria vector. Uh, Ides aegypti is a major Zika virus vector, and uh, Anopheles is uh, one kind of a major malaria vector. So, if we destroy the whole these two species, the world became surely more peaceful than ever. Uh, traditional uh, method: nets using nets, spray the plants, and the Insecticides are used worldwide to keep mosquitoes away to reduce population density. But more recently, genetically modified mosquitoes have been developed, which could potentially be used to reduce mosquito populations. A British company named Oxitec has developed a genetically modified mosquitoes of a variant of a species called Ides aegypti, 
this mosquito called Oxy fiber uh, 13A is a stray male modified so that final male mates with a wild female, the resulting egg will not buy They will never hatch. These male modified mosquitoes have been released in Brazil and sought approval to release the male mosquitoes in Florida as a way to combat the spread of the recent Zika virus transmitting. While there is no vaccine for Zika virus, many people are interested in using genetic engineering to kill off mosquitoes. This method, however, is no one yet known if this is an effective solution. Next slide. Uh, you may have heard the uh, gene driver for the first time. A tool called gene driver may be even more effective than Oxitex gene modified mosquito. Unlike the uh, ordinary gene, which is passed on to just half of all spring, a gene driver construct could be passed on to virtually all offspring. By combining a revolutionary new technology called CRISPR-Cas9 with the gene drive, the electing mosquito has become reality. By the RNA from CRISPR sequence have the Cas9 splitting enzyme to cut the copy of a allele and insert a selected gene. As the cell moves to repair the cut strands of DNA, it replaces it with the DNA that matches the selective DNA. It inserts a pre-selected gene sequence precisely where researchers want to put it. Next slide. Uh, you can see a comparison between the normal inheritance and the gene driver inheritance. Because the CRISPR-Cas9 tool can be made of DNA, it is possible to use CRISPR to insert itself into the target organisms. Whenever the cell drives, the CRISPR-Cas9 tool is spliced into each genome and bring it whatever genetic sequence research select. In this way, a genetic sequence can be inserted into every wild type DNA sequence with which it is paired. This mechanism is called a gene driver because it can be used to drive a selected gene sequence into population so that eventually, if the gene function as it expected, every descendant organism will possess the phenotypic trait associated with the selected sequence. Next slide. There are two kinds of uh, genetic developments uh, in the gene drive technology. Last year, a research team at Imperial College successfully modified Anopheles gambia mosquitoes to have a 95 male offspring. This sex ratio bias was further inherited by the modified offspring. The long-term effect of uh, this modification would be the eradicating of this mosquito species. In the file, the Californian team modified antibody gene to plasmodium parasite, a major uh, malaria agent. The anti-malarial gene was inherited by 99.5% of the modified offspring. These mosquitoes would then mate with non-modified mosquitoes in the wild and pass the anti-malarial gene onto their spring, ideally leading to all future generations being resistant to the malarial parasite. 
Next slide. Yeah, we can have a promise and parallel of gene drive technology. The implications of gene drives are huge, with both tremendous potential and risks. Among the possibilities, gene drive could be used to spread genes that reduce the ability of mosquitoes to transmit parasite or that produces mostly male mosquitoes to twist the sex ratio. Such a system could stop mosquito-borne deadly disease including malaria, Zika, and dengue. Gene drive-based approaches differ from traditional vector control methods such as insecticides and removing breeding sites. With a gene drive system, the population of the target species could be massively disrupted without directly affecting any other species. The development of gene drive approaches combined with current mosquito control practices hold the promise of reversing this trend and bringing us closer to the goal of eradicating of mosquito species and the terrible pathogen that depends on it. Some researchers even contend that the eradicating of a deadly mosquito is our moral duty. Next slide. Many people, including researchers, are uncomfortable with the idea of gene drive that have the potential to eradicate entire species. Though we might assume that mosquito lack any significant moral status, we can distinguish killing of an individual organism from the eradicating of a whole species. Although species like moral agency, self-awareness, sentience, or individuality, uh, Holmes Law's time contention in that species lines are individual systems whose parts are individual organisms. The argument for species level respect might be accepted to traditional deontological view that a duty requires a moral patient while denying that this patient must be a person or an individual organism such as mosquitoes. On the other hand, the risk of gene drive following release can be also huge. Driving gene could spread beyond the intended areas. Uprising gene drive to reduce or eliminate the species might open the unintended side effects. Gene drive might act in an unexpected ways and cause a variety of environmental harms while not deliver the promised benefits. And if you imagine that we, if we, one species of a, uh, mosquito, there will still be another uh, 35 or 100 of mosquito species. And it's possible to predict the ecological consequences of such a rapid, <coughs> massive, and uh, unprecedented disruption. However, many scientists who research mosquito biology and ecology are skeptical that the eradication of a mosquito would have the particularly bad ecological consequences. Scientists are unclear whether gene drive could spread to closely related species. A species known as the Anopheles Gambia complex of mosquitoes in Africa came from common ancestor less than 5 million years ago, and they sometimes still interbreed, breeding fertile hybrids. Gene drives might transfer from one species to another by this interbreeding. But given the fact that 
All the, almost all species can carry malaria, transfer from one species into another might even be desirable. In contrast, the eradication of a mosquito may make another mosquito to occupy the same ecological niche, making them even worse. Once Ides aegypti is gone, Ides albopictus might move in and serve as Zika virus vectors. Next slide. Finally, we can come to the conclusion. The ethical, ecological, and social implications of gene drives are especially complex and challenging. Activists and even more experts in the field are on a lot against this powerful technology. This raises the basic question, who will benefit from this biology technology and who decide how it will be used? How would anyone be able to assess the risk of gene drives? Would the public be informed and have a say in how they would be used? And if an extent were to occur, given that the damage would be massive and irreversible, one would be held accountable. Until recently, such questions are exclusively in the hand of scientists who promise to regulate themselves so as to push their research to their limits. As attractive as the promise of eradicating mosquitoes and halting the advance of malaria and Zika using principal Cas9 gene drives, maybe we need a deliberation on the risk of gene drives technologies. We need to have a genuinely inclusively debate about the issue raised by this new technology, addressing the ethical, legal, and social implications of gene drives. Thank you. Very much. I want to ask for the informed consent. How do we move from a bureaucratic or administrative uh, kind of consent to a more genuine informed consent and is the existence of informed consent uh, a possible symbol wherein there is lack of trust between the institutions from the patient to the doctor. Thank you. For the questions, I like the questions. Uh, I recognize the situations, the problems. Um, earlier this year, uh, we tried to write something on informed consent together with colleagues from Japan, and uh, we found uh, really. Uh, I read one article. Uh, it happened to be from Malaysia. That article that highlights um, uh, that misunderstanding among medical doctors. They rely too much on the consent document as they think that would sufficiently cover them from litigation. While in the court, the judge will actually look at the real understanding of the patients. So this really highlights um, uh, the, 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 the problem. I think. Well, um, I don't think I have the, the, the complete answer for your questions, but I think this, is, this should be something which we have to do that together. There has to be something coming up from the public uh, as that involves them as well. And uh, together there has to be movement from the uh, health sectors in order uh, for them to really uh, meet, meaning that, um, um, uh, well, uh, the public as the user of healthcare, they that uh, should have sufficient amount of, aware, of, of awareness regarding the uh, 
the consent procedures, and then uh, on the other side, the health sectors uh, need to do, I think, a lot because uh, now I think there are many studies on informed consent that highlights on the weakness and problems in the practice that are being done now, from the timing which is given not to uh, not not sufficient, and then uh, 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 right a lack of knowledge, lack of the gap of knowledge between the, the doctors and the uh, patients, and then not to mention the hierarchical problems between the patients and the and the and the doctors that probably uh, affect the genuinity of the informed consent. I hope I. Uh, have answered that question. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, first is my comment for the second speaker uh, about the irrigate the mosquitoes. I think uh, it is is it right for us to feel more peaceful when we make one or two species is uh, extinct. Uh, is it really our moral duty to make uh, one species to extinct? Uh, rather than, I think rather than eradicate or make it extinct, uh, why we, why the research, uh, researcher not try to change or drive the gene that make the factors become the factors of the disease? Not to eradicate the factors, but uh, not to drive the genes that makes uh, the two species is uh, extinct. But drive, try to drive the gene that make the factors become factors. Okay, uh, you get my point. Is there any research about these uh, issues? Thank you very much. Yeah, I also mentioned that uh, there are two success cases, one in Imperial College and the other in uh, California teams. And the California teams are trying to make uh, the plas plasmodium or yeah, disease transmitting resistant to trying to make uh, resistant to uh, disease transmitting vectors. So it is more yeah, comfortable for us to uh, have these changes rather than eradicating the whole species. But uh, think of Jika, for instance. It's uh, uh, transmitted by virus rather than plasmodium, so uh, I don't think that there is any uh, efficient uh, approaches to uh, uh, transmit the virus. And the virus is very uh, quick to change its uh, ability to transmit, so I don't think it's uh, uh, efficient for trans for changing transmitting uh, vectors in cases of uh, virus. But yeah, in cases of uh, Anopheles gambia, transmitting uh, vectors of uh, malaria can be changed by. Uh, Uh, altering the uh, properties of uh, resistance, so on. Yeah. Thank you for your free presentations and I learned uh, a lot of this. I would like to raise a short question for each of the presenters. Okay. Now go to the 
because speaker. Now the problem of the Fong Kanshen in genetic studies is certainly a very uh, special and important question uh, in this part of research. And I, I'm glad you raised at, in the last of the, the, the PowerPoint here that ultimately the Kanshen Fong need to be signed by an adult member of the family. Create some deep paradigm of informed consent in general. But in fact, we have been doing something similar in Taiwan because many years ago I joined with Professor Chai here and another colleague in the LC part of the genetic genome problem. Now we propose, maybe, only I personally propose that we need some kind of family consent in doing genetic information, okay? Rather than just the individual specific or even broad consent. Why? Because genetic matter, genetic information is not totally personal. Because my brother's genetic information also contain my and my father or my information. Genetic information contains something important to my children. So, it's quite different from ordinary uh, donation or organ or donation or information. Yeah? And we think that family consent should be a vital part of this type of research. But of course, you have to face a problem, a uh, number of problems. Some accuse that such kind of requirement would infringe the personal autonomy of the uh, donor. And we may have some serious impact on the development of uh, genetic uh, research. And it may cause a lot of extra costs because you have to find some concerns from other people around the, the family. Okay, I, I would like to see how you, you would like to deal with this. And the justification for Malaysia that then certain members of the family, not necessarily the donor, right, have to sign the consent form. Okay. Now to the second speaker, I would like to, to say that that's very that's the new technique of fifty case nine, something like that. That improves a lot of our genetic allergies. And it would give a great hope that we may go further now towards uh, genetic therapy and these other things, okay? But we just mentioned this mosquito study here and remind me of the danger here. Would there be a risk that somehow this kind of genetic technology may be used in a certain sense like the eugenic thing? Maybe a, just a negative eugenic, that is, we may use this technology ultimately, in some sense, make certain uh, ethnic groups of the human being disappear totally. I don't know. This, this, this may be kind of which, uh, I don't know how possible is that from the perspective of this new development of genetic technologies. Okay. And as to the last speaker, I would like to raise that. Okay, the problem of organ transplantations, of course, cause a lot of uh, moral problems, especially when they come across borders. Okay, but I think any every patient have the right, the right to obtain the necessary uh, organs that will, will save her or his life. I think this is a basic right of everybody. Okay. Now, the problem is whether the organ or tender is in a moral or immoral way. Okay. We know that there's a lot of problem in organ transplantation around the world, especially in the developing, uh, developing countries. Now, when you say about the Falun Gong uh, report, I'm not sure. 
In some sense, I think every country, even earlier in Taiwan, we have this kind of illegal or immoral kind of regulations. Any time, in some sense, to improve that. Anyway, but I, I, I'm not sure the report from foreign home people is certified. Okay. Now, actually, I, we have more evidence that certain kind of illegal or uh, even in more organ transplantation happening in Philippines. Okay. Uh, from some of CNN report, you should you know about it. There's also very serious things happening in Sinai Desert. Okay. People are actually connected in the organs uh, being out and sent to the capital of uh, Egypt. I mean, there's a lot of these things. And I don't I don't think that is the uh, reason involve some political elements in this kind of medical talk to you. Oh, this is, it may be one of the elements too. Okay. But uh, returning to Taiwan, we also have a lot of patients get to the plantation from many China. And we also have the same problem, how to deal with these patients. Okay. As you report from the Jap Japanese experience, I could not quite agree with that. Okay. Patient herself or himself is innocent. And for medical person, it doesn't matter how the patient comes around with this situation. As a medical profession, you have to do all your medical techniques and provisions. And in Taiwan, we also face the same problem because some of the transplantation itself may not be too good. Okay? We may have to follow up with a, a lot of medical resources to engage. And I think basically in Taiwan, we do the, I think the best things to save at best our effort for this kind of patients. It doesn't matter whether he got the transplantation or any way. Okay? But I think it may be too political for the Japanese doctors to think about because of certain kind of countries that do neglect your patients. Well, again, thank you for the question. So you, you have pointed out quite rightly what the basis for having family consent, that actually the interest of the data is shared among family and different family members. But then, we do have problems of autonomy. Right, um, okay. With regards, uh, I, I think in the practice, this has to be uh, deliberated case by case. I mean, not all cases of a study we can do uh, family consent. But in our case, in the, in the case that I mentioned in the presentation, uh, remember, we have approached first the mother. The, info the recruitment involves trials, which is the, fa the mother, the father, and then also the problem. Right. Um, and uh, we have approached first the mother because of trying to circumvent the possibility of incidental findings of a paternity. So then, uh, in the first instance, we, have, we, we, we would have obtained the consent of the mother informally. Only when the mother indicated consent, then we approached the rest of the family members that we intend to recruit, which is left two persons, uh, the, the, the father and, and the proven, right? Um, and naturally, usually, uh, 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 traditionally, uh, the father would, would, would sign. So it means when we face the rest of the family members, the mother himself, uh, herself already, already have consented. And then the, uh, if left the father, the kid, the, the child, because of the nature of the study, happened to be uh, somebody incapacitated. Uh, true that the, the, uh, they, might, they, they, they might have growing autonomy, because of, because, but the disease itself, I cannot reveal the disease, we are still ongoing. Um, uh, uh, the disease itself made the, the, the kids incapacitated, which is uh, practically not possible to express even as sin, right? By right, we have to take as sin. So that's, uh, that's the situation of that one particular 
uh, uh, study. But yes, I do have to recognize. I think I, 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 I am thinking this probably this is one area where uh, more research should be done, when, especially on how the uh, procedure for family consent should be should be taken. Um, uh, whether the research personnel should be there or not, because that, that could be something, discussing something more private that others uh, should not uh, hear, and then the outcome will be, uh, will be given later. That's uh, uh, my answer. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for your question. Um, let me uh, explain some on the CRISPR-Cas9 technology. Is it, it is a kind of a gene editing technology. Yeah, and uh, when the virus came to bacteria, the bacteria stores CRISPR sequence and uh, during the next uh, arrival of a bacteria, the bacteria used the uh, CRISPR sequence to uh, guide the uh, Cas9 splitting enzyme to the virus and uh, uh, cut the virus into pieces. In the year of 2012, the uh, Dr. Daudna and uh, Emmanuel Charpentier developed it uh, to edit the gene uh, by altering the uh, CRISPR sequence. Uh, because of the technology uh, is uh, quite uh, easier and cheaper than the e uh, earlier version of the gene editing, it became popular for use. So it can be used uh, by DIY technologists and uh, even in the uh, high school curriculum. So the yeah it it. It will be worrisome that some terrorists can use the genetic editing technology like CRISPR-Cas9. Uh, but imagine that the uh, generation time, it is the, the generation time of the insect is quite shorter than that of a human. So I don't think it uh, is practical to use in the human or uh, with uh, organisms with a, a longer generation time. Uh, and the last, uh, I think uh, uh, we can uh, We can not uh, put value on the technology itself, but on the application in case of a CRISPR-Cas9 technology. Yeah, it has many advantages for using gene therapies and uh, even enhancement of human and uh, for the genetic modification of uh, uh, crops and uh, livestocks, but it is our duty to guide its uh, application for not using in the terrorism or military purpose. I think. Thank you very much. Thank you for your comment. So, so my opinion, uh, organ transplant is a kind of ammunition storage or box 
of or jar of Pandora, the Greek. You see? Uh, and you want to say small number of donors are not good, you want to say. Maybe. Uh, but I think uh, compulsory organ donation system is wrong. So, used in Japan, many doctors, transplant doctors say uh, organ shortage. Even this word, I think, misleading. Not organ shortage, a small number of donors. It is natural, I think. We have no duty to donate organs. So, uh, inevitably, Japanese patients or some Western countries' patients go to China or India or Vietnam. I'm doing research in Vietnam and uh, Cambodia. Uh, it is a worldwide phenomenon. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, the time is past. Yes, and, uh, very short because they are already two. <coughs> Thank you. Um, I just had a comment on CRISPR and gene drive about the GM mosquitoes. In the uh, US election, one of the good results was the, uh, perhaps, was the referendum in Florida and Key West uh, said that there cannot be any release of genetically modified uh, Aedes aegypti mosquitoes. So in terms of the gene drive in the US, uh, that's been rejected. In, um, in that trial, and one would expect it will be similarly rejected elsewhere. There is a very important alternative called Wolbacter, which is an internal uh, parasite that lives in mosquitoes, and many trials in the last 10 years in Torres Strait Islands in Australia and in other parts of the world. So this is an alternative to gene drive uh, for this case. Um, so there may be alternatives for biological control mechanisms which might be easier uh, for people to accept because they're somewhat more reversible. And there is uh, several reports, I wrote one in, which is on the World Health Organization website on the need for community engagement in any ecological intervention, especially in genetically engineered vectors. Um, so thank you very much for your, your uh, paper that I'll give everybody. Uh, thank you very much. I know that the summer question that we don't have the time, so uh, please, in a break time, the, the, the discuss with them. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for all the